Hello everybody, today I'm gonna to attempt to resole a pair of shoes at home. Um, I've failed at this really miserably once before. You see there, these pair of Johnson and Murphy loafers really need to be resold. Um, I think I've got all the materials that I need to try this at home. Um, and so we're gonna see what happens. Okay, follow me along the journey, let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Here it goes. Here they are completely finished up. Okay, so I have one other video I'll link below in the description of uh, resoling at home. It was a fail. I have the you know, fail across the, uh, you know, the photo of the, the what do you call it, the image. Because um, it was just horrible. I mean, I don't have a Goodyear welting machine at home, obviously. So it was hand welted. Uh, the groove was all over the place. The holes weren't in line. The stitching, it was just, it was just, it was terrible. Functionally, it kind of worked. But, so I'm going to try this again. So I think I've got everything I need. Um, pair of shoes. Uh, one, of the, one of my friend's shoes wore a clean hole through it. These are a pair of Johnston & Murphy Aristocrats, if you can see there. Uh, so they're pretty decent shoe made in USA. Quick tip of the day. See the model number 24-8561. Uh, All the Aristocraft line shoes at least used to have a 24 dash model number. The lower line shoes would have a 22 dash. And this even says made in the USA of imported materials. So this is one of their later, you know, decent shoes. Um, I believe this is, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm 99% sure this is corrected grain leather. But anyway, so... Um, this isn't to save money, and I'm not doing a how to resole a shoe at home video. Okay, well, let me be clear. This is not a how to video. I have worked with a cobbler in the area, and he, uh, so I've actually done this with a cobbler with their professional machines, and I have uh, a pair of halves. This is going to be a half sole, but he already put this on his five in one machine there. Do you see there? And skived it. It gives it a really nice, you know, edge. What it does is basically. You know, cuts. It, it, you know, it, the machine cuts this piece off, which is really hard to do at home. Um, and I got some cork. Um, I'm not sure what the padding is going to be like in this shoe, so I've got some thin cork. Uh, I got a roll of thicker cork. Uh, I've got a pair of. Oh, I've also got a pair of Goodyear top lifts. I think I have all the tools I need. Um, you know, including a stitching awl, some thread. I've got some cool tools here. All right, check this out. I've got a cool uh, knife. Right, if I need that, and what else do I have here? Um, this this little bit here is pretty cool. I'll take the protective cap off. Uh, what do you call this thing? I forget what they call this thing. Um, but this is for basically trimming the edge. I'll show you later. Trimming the edge of a piece of leather. Uh, this one, this one, and it does is it cuts a groove. So basically, what I'll be using this for later is. You know, you kind of use it like this, and that arm there psh, will cut a groove in the leather in which the stitch will lay. Um, I think those are the major tools I've got. I've got some, you know, some files if I need to file leather. This is just a piece of wood. This is actually a burnishing tool to burnish leather. I'll show you what that's for. Um, uh, you know, I got a whole pile of stuff here. here. I'll show you my whole pile of... So as stated previously, I'm obviously not a professional at this. So again, this is not a how to resole a shoe video. I'm just documenting uh, my hobby. Um, so why am I doing this? What would a half sole job cost? Don't quote me on this, but I think it's around 60 to 80 bucks. You have to buy this materials. So, you know, just to buy the raw materials, I've already spent 10 bucks for a pair of these from the cobbler. So it's just, uh, if you do this to save money, it'll probably cost you, you know, you'll probably save like $2 an hour is what I'm saying. So this is just for the experience of this. I, this is a skill as I just want to do it. And I'm just documenting this as I go. So uh, the way this is going to kind of work is I need to first, I want this logo kind of centered on there. Okay. Um, I guess if I would have thought this ahead of time, I just had the cobbler kind of, you know, skive the leather just wherever. Um, to tell you the truth, that's actually not at a very good point. You see, it's kind of angled. That should have been straight. So now I have to decide if I'm just going to leave it that way, which is probably what I'm going to do. Or if I recut it and re skive it. But this, this cut is very difficult to do at home without a five in one machine. Um, so you see the kind of things I'm learning already? So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at an angle. That first line I drew there with a the pencil is going to make the logo relatively straight to the you know, middle of the sole. Um, and then do you see that second line right there is about where they're going to overlap. So I need to 
cut off the sole here. You don't want this overlap on the area of the foot that walks on the ground, okay? According to what how I was trained and taught to do this, okay? So I'm gonna open the shoe up first of all. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna cut it off right about there. First, I need to cut the stitching. This is a Goodyear welted shoe. If you don't know what that means, I'll link a video. The stitches go from there. You can see in here, do you see the stitching? The stitches go through there to the upper. So I need to cut the stitches all the way around. That's the first step. Basically, I'm gonna separate the, the sole. You hear it cutting? So what happened was the knife cut into the leather. It missed, in other words, I'm slicing the leather sole in half, not separating it from the welts. So this stuff isn't as easy as, as it looks. Notice I'm keeping my hands clear of the cut zone. Okay, so here's what we've got. Uh, it's foam. It's pretty soft foam. I can squish it completely flat with my with my fingers, just with finger pressure. Now this is a sticky, it's kind of sticky foam, but here's another piece of foam between the insoles fairly thin. Can you see the gemming? This fabric is the gemming, and here's the welt. There is some cork in here. Hmm, interesting. I think I'm going to leave this and fill that void with cork. Coming up with a little bit better technique. I'm just finding a split there. This is just a like a pick. I'm just running it across just to split the welt before I put the knife into cut so that I don't cut the welt where I shouldn't. I already did it on this side.
All right, the second one is off. I'm developing a faster way to pick the stitches. I'm just taking this from the top side, going in that groove, and it's pretty much just dragging them out. Now, I hope I don't damage the welt doing this. I hope this is an okay method. I'm sure some professional cobblers will tell me. I know I'm going to get roasted on this video, but <laughs> hey, like I said, these are cheap shoes. Um, you know, yeah, the owner could have, you know, sent them to a professional cobbler to get them redone. But in other words, if I destroy these shoes, you know, it's a, he, he gave me permission. So I can't get this one. Sometimes these ones, I don't know if there's a knot there or something won't come out. I'm failing forwards. No way I can learn to do this if I don't fail forward. But for the most part, most of them are coming out this way fairly easily. Okay, I got my setup out here in the garage. As you can see, I've got the soles cut. I need to put a nice angle on them. Um, and what I'm using is my handy dandy bench grinder here, or belt sander, I should say, converted into a bench grinder, and I got a couple nails. Uh, you know, securing it a little bit better than I have in the past. And I think this nail needs to. There we go. I'm gonna get gloves on, um, and I got earplugs here too. Okay, I don't think that's too bad. The most difficult part is that there's a shank. Do you see that? There's actually a metal shank in this. That's very impressive. Um, so it's easier to sand thin here. You put pressure, even pressure, it'll sand here more than here because there's not as much backing this up. But I think I'm pretty happy with that. I'd like a little bit more of a definite line right there. there's a step I'm happy I'll do the other one off camera all right I've got them both uh, touched them up here a little bit with the hand file um, I think they're ready to put the cork in
already. I made a mistake. See that edge there? I should have taken that to the grinder and sanded that edge off so it's not so, not such a corner, but oops. Now, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to use to press these together. I made a little mini press, I'll show you. So here's my homemade press. The, you've probably seen this, if you've watched all my videos, you've seen this two by four, seat cushion, curved seat cushion from a car seat that I accidentally <laughs> caught on fire welding a car floorboard. And this is uh, you know, the last part to uh, you know actual cobbler stand that I have. Oh, oh, oh. oh, baby, we're getting there. Okay, see now this edge, I'm gonna take this little little tool, I forget what it's called, but watch this, this is cool. I'm gonna try and stay on camera. There we go. I just figured something out. There's actually a hole in this thing, and the hole was the hole was clogged with leather. Watch now. See now it's actually creating a ribbon. Okay, now that's tiring. Uh, this is the part I'm really not looking forward to. And this is really, I don't think there's a proper way to hand welt a shoe that already has holes in the welt. So what I'm trying to do is stitch back through the holes that are already there in the welt. So I've got my stitching all here. Um, see, so I'm trying to do is poke it through from the top and hit the angle just right so that I got pop out in the middle of that groove. Okay, so now do you see there I got a little loop? Okay. And the thread goes all the way through the tool, and I got like, I don't know, eight feet of string here. I don't know how much I'm gonna need. Loop it through. You see? Okay, so I got a loop, right? Okay. 
Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing, to be very honest with you guys. Uh, if I do that, I need to... You know what I think it needs to happen? I think I need a lot of thread. Right. And I'm just going to go to the next... And those holes are hard to see. The welt's dirty. I should have cleaned it. Ooh. Oops. Threads need to be tight at some point. Ooh, that's what I wanted. With that knot down in there, I think. All right, I'm just gonna keep going, see what happens. piece of string and I have an engineering degree. I will figure this out. I got one thing I was doing wrong. Push it through, pull it back. This end has to go behind the needle, I think. Here's what I was doing wrong. And I gotta pull this tight before I pull it through. Otherwise, that's what happens. Damn, I thought I had it figured out. Why am I doing this again? Ah! All right, I think I got it figured out. Pull it tight. Pull this tight. Then the stitches up in there to make sure this is tight so I don't get an extra loop. Next welt pull, aim. Okay, so I finally learned something, um, kind of like a mental breakthrough for me. Now, you guys that know me and know my channel know, you know, as I already said in this video, this is not a how-to video. Uh, this is making mistakes and learning from them. Um, so what I'm gonna point out here, let me get my little uh, the awl here, is I want you to see here, this section, you see the goal, this is the goal, is to have holes and stitches inside the groove. And you can see here for a little short run, the holes are in the groove. And then you can see here, they run very clearly outside of the groove. What I was actually doing was starting on the top side, taking the awl and a hammer 
and then punching it through, okay? Um, and I was doing that at a, you know, a little bit of an angle. Like if this is vertical, I was going a little bit this way to try and hit the groove. And you see how through here, first of all, they're not in line, okay, they're crooked, but you see how they miss the groove? What's going on, I finally figured out. Um, so you, you see where those holes are on the top side. And because this is done by a Goodyear welting machine, they're pretty much an equal distance from the edge of the welt, pretty much the same distance from the edge of the welt. Now, when I put this sole on and then glued it, what I did was I took it to the, uh, I'm using a belt sander as an edge grinder to grind this edge. Now, if you can see, it's hard to tell on camera, but like through here, through this section right here, it's vertical, but through right here, see, I'm, I'm gonna put this as like a straight edge. See, that's vertical. But when I get to this section, do you see it's tilted, okay? I mean, can you kind of tell? I don't know if you can tell, but it's tilted through here. So what's happening is through here and then through this section, it's straight again. In other words, I'm not getting the shape of the edge of the sole right. So this tool that I use to create the groove is measuring off of the edge of the sole which in this section here is too far in because I ground it at an angle, not straight up and down. So as a result, this groove is farther inboard than it would have been had I had the edge of the sole where it should have been. So I just learned something. I just learned that the edge finishing is much more critical than I realized to the placement of the groove. Um, like I said, still trying to figure out uh, uh, how, to, how to do this. You can see there, the tip of the toe um, and, and here's something else you got to stay like I was saying angled I went too much of an angle is what happened there you see how inboard those holes are so I should have made those holes more vertical so eh, it's ugly I'm learning here's the other one it's not Terrible, horrible? Now, it may not be very obvious here, but what's really going on when using a single needle technique is you only advance forward one hole when you are putting the needle in, like for example, uh, when, the way I'm doing it from the bottom. So I only advance uh, forward one hole when I am uh, going up from the bottom. So then I pull the thread tight all the way through, and that creates the, you know, obviously that loop. So then you are taking the thread and needle and you are looping it around the uh, top thread, okay? Then you send it back down. Now when I go down, I'm going down through the same hole I just came up, okay? So you don't advance um, on the top, you only advance on the bottom, okay? Or, you know, I suppose you could do it the other way, you only advance on the top and not the bottom, but you don't advance both, um, and that creates, you know, the lock, the loop, the lock, and the lock stitch. I don't know if you can tell. I broke the needle. I think the third or fourth one I've broken.
so it's not super horrible. Not professional, but I don't know. We'll see how I can clean it up here a little bit. So here's a trick I learned. This is called burnishing, okay? So you take just this blunt wooden, you know, tool, and the surface texture of the leather when you cut it gets very rough. When you stain or polish it, it's very obvious that it's rough. So you just take a tool like this. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it goes from rough to smooth. I'm no expert in this by any means. Next to Phoebing's tan dye. This edge dressing, this is black edge dressing from Simple Shine. I'm gonna use this to re dye the edges black, and you, know, you generally just have like a little check ball in the tip, see?
Okay, why am I using, I'm gonna use this cheap polish that I've got, Shoe Right. actually I found this at my father's house. Why am I not using the good stuff? This is corrected green leather. To be frank with you, I don't think it matters. Okay, here they are all finished up. Now don't be too impressed. Polish the uppers up, of course. Um, where was it? Oh, you know what, I gotta, I didn't see that. You see there the welt I tore into or something, so I'll have to I'll have to do something about that, which I will do off camera, but biggest mistake I made was right there. I poked into the uppers with the needle. That would be a fatal flaw if this were a customer's job. Can you see the edge of the sole? It's not perfect. You see, once you burnish it, do you see how all the flaws, like it's, it's got some waviness in it? I mean, you can't see that really, um, you know, before the edge is finished, so. Edge finishing is one of those things I want to get better at. I already told you before the angle of the edge of the sole was off, but not horrible, I guess. So let's take a look at the so let's take a look at the sole itself. Obviously, that line there is, you know, not very subtle. I didn't do. Uh, I should have cut. First of all, on the sole, I could have cut that line better, straighter, sharper, and then butted this up more. Um, then if it overlapped more, I could have sanded it down. But right now, there's kind of like a gap there, so I can't make that line disappear. So you can see the stitching job. Ah, there's some bad spots, and it got better. But, you know, I mean, what do you guys think? You know, for hand-welted, an amateur who's only done this once before, Tried to hide it a little bit with a black dye, but, you know, functional, I think. See what I mean by the edge finishing? It's not easy. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, analyze the cost of this here. So I spent, I believe, $12 to actually pick up the half soles and the glue from the cobbler. Uh, I broke three needles. Let's just call it eight bucks. It might have been a little bit more. Um, it's for the actual needles that I was using in the awl and uh, the other needle. So let's just call it $20 in materials. I kind of like saved, you could say, there for $40, the uh, $60 minus the $20 that I spent. It took me at least six hours to do this. Uh, most of that was stitching. And therefore, if you took that six, uh, the $40 divided by the six hours, it's almost a little under, but uh, about $7 an hour is really what I saved. But the minimum wage here in Ohio is $8.70 an hour. So really what I did is I worked for $1.70 under minimum wage so if you look at this it's absolutely insane it makes no sense to you know spend this much time to try and save the money so this wasn't obviously the purpose of this this purpose of this was just to improve my skills document it as we go so hopefully you guys got a little bit of enjoyment out of this uh you know um you know watching me fumble around and uh at least to get a little bit better at my skills so hope you enjoyed that hope you got a little bit of entertainment value out of that at least Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you want to see some more of my failures, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. God bless you guys. Take care.